the idea behind the patent system is that um, it's expensive and uncertain to come up with new innovations, uh, and it's cheap and easy to copy them once somebody else has come up with them. And so we worry that if we don't give you some incentive to be an innovator instead of an imitator, uh, everybody's going to want to wait and copy somebody else's invention. So what we do is we give you exclusive rights to your inventions for a limited period of time if you meet certain criteria. If your invention's important enough, it's new enough, uh, we will let you and only you make use of that invention. Why it's important is, is because innovation's important, right? Uh, and most of the benefits we have in society uh, come from things that we didn't have 250 years ago. Well, there's been a lot of change in patent law, really in the last 40 years. Um, uh, starting in the 1980s, uh, we did a lot of things to try to strengthen the patent system, to give patent owners more rights uh, in hopes that that would encourage innovation. Uh, and then starting 10 or 15 years ago, a number of people, myself among them, started to worry that maybe we'd shot too far. Right? Maybe we'd uh, given too many patent owners too many rights and the result was, um, uh, was, a, was an anti-commons problem, right? That nobody, nobody had the rights to make all of the things they wanted, uh, that as the general counsel of Google said several years ago, if you wanted to make a smartphone loaded with apps all in, you might need licenses from 250,000 different patents. Uh, and that became unworkable. So in the last 10 or 15 years, courts and Congress have been looking at trying to cut back the strength of patent rights in some respects, in part to deal with this problem of patent trolls, uh, but in part just to make sure that patents aren't actually interfering with innovation when they're supposed to be promoting it. There are a bunch of interesting cases. The Supreme Court's been very active in this area of late. Um, the case everybody's watching for next year uh, is a case called Oil States, uh, which asks the question of whether this uh, IPR procedure in which the patent office decides whether they made a mistake in granting a patent is constitutional. Uh, so there's a challenge that says only a jury uh, can decide whether a patent is invalid. Um, I don't think that the court is going to accept that challenge, but if they did, it would pretty radically remake the process of figuring out whether or not a patent is valid. Because there have been all these changes in, in the patent law, both strengthening protection and then weakening protection, we hear a lot of concerns that the, that the sky is falling, right? Uh, people said, oh my gosh, we're, we're destroying innovation because we're making patents too strong. Now you hear a bunch of people saying, uh, we're destroying the patent system because we're making it too weak. Uh, what I did in a paper published last year called The Surprising Resilience of the Patent System uh, is look at the last 40 years of data and we found something very interesting, which is while there are a bunch of changes in the law, strengthening it, weakening it, the basic metrics of the system don't seem to respond very much to those changes. People are increasing the number of patent applications they file at a reasonably steady rate. They're increasing the number of patents they grant at a reasonably steady rate. Uh, the number of lawsuits is uh, increasing in a way that doesn't seem to be related to how strong the rights are. Even how often you win those lawsuits, which you would think was certainly going to be related to what are the legal doctrines, uh, is surprisingly unaffected by our changes to the legal rules. But I think the kind of broadest lesson really is maybe a lesson for, for law in general, right? Which is we, fake, we focus a lot of attention in law school, in law practice on what do the cases say? Who's going to win a particular case? Uh, what happens? Will I get paid damages and so forth? But the legal system as a whole kind of operates in the shadow of that. And most of the things that happen uh, aren't happening in court. Right? Most of the things that are happening are business dealings, they're people kind of uh, uh, arranging their lives, arranging their affairs in the shadow of the law, uh, but not ultimately thinking, I'm going to go sue you.